Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today? I'm still playing with it, Nathan. How are you doing? <laughs> For the listeners that have no idea what you're talking about, you're talking about your pocket knife. Yeah. I got me a pocket knife and it has sweet, sweet action. Man, it's good. <laughs> yep. He can't he can't let go of his pocket knife. <laughs> All right. Um Landon, last week we were talking about belief systems, especially self-belief, believing that you actually deserve to have the clients that you want, have the lifestyle that you want. I know that that's something that I struggled with. I know that that's something that a lot of people, actually, you know, I can't even think of a single person that I've ever worked with that didn't struggle with that. But this week you said you wanted to talk about getting clients 101 and before we jumped on, you said that there's actually kind of a transition from believing that you deserve it and then into actually getting the clients that you want. And so I'm going to start it off with that and I'm going to hand it over to you. Cool. The The bridge or the transition that you're talking about is is kind of the point. One of the main points of last week's podcast was defining what you want and actually getting clarity or getting clear on defining what it is that you want. Like I've been there, everything that you said at the beginning of this podcast and everything you said at the last podcast, I'm totally guilty of it too. Like, how do you think I've like, how, how can I speak to it? Because I've been through it, right? My life's been in shambles before and I've gone through the process of changing it. I didn't change my life. I changed me, right? How you do that to begin with is you begin to define it and you get clear on it. What we talked about last week on the podcast was basically people get what they deserve. And that might sound harsh, but we tend to get what we think we deserve. What I think I deserve tends to be what I get. And I've seen that expressed in a lot of other people's lives. There's lots and lots and lots of books written on personal development, right? Like that's kind of the whole idea. We tend to get what we think we deserve. Getting clients 101 really needs to start with defining what it is that we want and getting clear on that. And it's generally not the surface level shit we think. Oh, I want 10 clients that all pay me a million dollars a month and da 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 da, right? Big pile of money and I've got a team that handles all the shit and I don't do anything but sit on a beach. Bullshit. That's not what you want. And if it is what you want, you're in for a rude awakening because that doesn't happen like that, right? So it comes down to defining what it is that we want. And when it comes to clients and getting clients 101, defining what we want by starting with what we will and will not tolerate, because that's really easy for most of us. I won't tolerate people treating me like this. I won't tolerate not getting paid. I won't tolerate not getting paid on time, right? Cool. What will you tolerate? I'll tolerate the fact that most people are inherently good and that about 98.7% of the population is not close to perfect. And not close to perfect in my world means that we all basically get somewhere between a B plus and an eight minus across the board in every area of our life. I can deal with people at B plus to A minus and anything above A minus is amazing. Shit happens. People make mistakes. People do dumb things. Cool. Don't treat me poorly. That's what I'll tolerate. And I think it starts with getting clear on what we want. And I don't think that's the most people's answer to that, especially most people either in business newish or people that have a business that they don't really like and they want to grow. It's all about the dollars and cents. And I think by and large, most of us start in the wrong place because that's how we look at it. Okay. So since there's so much overlap in relationships and business and, and especially client relationships, um, I, I bet everybody listening right now knows at least one person who constantly ends up relation in relationships with people that they're miserable with. It, we can all think of that one girl who is constantly getting with abusive guys who run her down and treat her like crap, or that one guy 
who's constantly getting with girls that are always cheating on him and he, yet he still runs back to them. And as soon as he's done with that one, he's running to the next girl that's going to cheat on him and treat him like crap. Um, a lot of times it seems like, and, and I've known from talking to these people and, and having them in my family, a lot of times they don't believe that they deserve better than that. And so they don't attract better than that. And if they walk into a room, they can find the one guy or the one girl who's going to treat them like crap. There could be 95 people in the room. 94 of them are going to fall down at their feet and worship them. One of them is going to treat them like crap and put their cigarettes out on them. And that's the one that they walk right up to and find. Is there something similar to that phenomenon in the client getting game? It's not similar. It's the exact same thing. The currency is different, right? The currency in an intimate relationship is love and affection and sex. The currency in a client relationship in that sense is money. All of the other aspects are exactly identical. Whether you choose to treat your clients like, like you would a deep, intimate, personal relationship, don't fuck your flock, but what I'm saying is, is, would you treat them like somebody that you decided to date, then marry, have kids with, join your families, deal with their in-laws, or not? It's the exact same thing, in my opinion. Okay, so that leads to my second question, which is, if somebody has realized I'm sick of dealing with clients like this, similar to somebody who says, you know what, I deserve better than this. I deserve not to be kicked around. I deserve not to be cheated on. You have in a business relationship, you say, you know what, I deserve not to have to be chasing people for payments. I deserve not to be dealing with the bottom of the barrel. I deserve not to whatever. And you were talking about a, a good way to, ju- or to clarify what it is that you want is to first clarify what it is that you don't want and then say, well, what's the opposite of that? How do people start getting to that point where they actually do start believing they deserve better than that. If they can clearly define what it is that they want, being able to honestly tell yourself that you believe you deserve what you want is, in my opinion, it's two different things. That was a big ass long question. And I'm going to make you repeat it because you'll probably shorten it and make it more concise. I will right now. Knowing what you want and believing that you deserve what you want are two different things. How do you get from knowing what you want to believing that you deserve what you want? You could not have asked that better. And this is funny. We are so on the same page. That was not discussed. So last Friday, I was, I was on a coaching call, a guidance call with one of my clients. And that was the main topic. What's the difference between knowing and believing? Knowing something, whether we know it consciously or subconsciously or unconsciously or because we were educated, we know a thing. Knowing and believing are not the same thing. What's the difference? The difference is living it. I'm going to turn believing it into believing it. Here's why. I know something. And if I don't practice that something, I don't believe it. Because I've got all this evidence that goes, yeah, well, I know that consciously, like I should, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm worth something. Internally, I've got all this proof that, damn it, you're not doing that the right way, right? And we've got millions of examples of that, both from ourselves and mostly from people outside of us. So to go from knowing something to believing it, we need to live it, which means that, okay, cool. I know that. I'm going to try. You with your conversations with your clients, you with changing who you were attracting as your clients, you with raising your prices, all of that shit. The first time that you did each and every one of those things, you didn't feel like, oh, fuck, it's duh. Yeah, I totally believe this. You were like, I went and said that I should do this. I'm like, I'll fucking try. Wow, that didn't go so bad. They actually fucking signed up. Wow, they were totally rad. Oh my God, they paid more than I thought. Now you start getting evidence that what you know to be true is actually fucking true and can be true for you because you're living it, you're taking action, and all of a sudden you believe it. You know it and you believe it because you're living it. That's the difference. So 
I have two things that I want to say about that. But number one, um, be living it. Uh, a lot of times we might say, I believe that I deserve this, but then we settle for less. We say, I believe that I deserve a guy that doesn't cheat on me. Or I believe that I deserve a girl that's not constantly running me down all the time. But then we settle and we go home to the same person that has been doing that stuff. In client getting, I've been guilty of where I believed I was worth more. But then when somebody said, well, we can pay you this much, I would be like, okay, well, I guess I'll go ahead and do it. Um, Speak on that. Because you don't actually believe it. You haven't concluded that this is what I believe. This is what I will and will not tolerate. And no, I'm not going to whore myself out and give you all my time and all my expertise for anything lower than this dollar amount. And then they present you with a lower dollar amount and you go, fuck, I need the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, guess what? You're not believing it because you're not living it. I really appreciate that. And like, I'm, I'm happy with the, the counter offer, but like the price that I gave you is the price that I'm willing to do this for. And if, if we can't like meet there, then maybe we're not the right fit and that's okay. You do that one time and you look back on that could have been client two or three months down the road and know the person that, that ended up taking the money from them going, thank God I didn't get into that giant mess. Now you're believing it through actual practice and experience. Guess what? You're formulating new belief about yourself and what you're worth. Amazing. So the second thing that I wanted to to touch on that is in Influence Architects, one of the uh, higher tier trainings that you provide and that I'm a part of, one of the things that we've been going through recently is kind of redefining our offer and and making sure that we're actually getting the type of clients that we want. And so as a part of that, I completely redesigned my offer and I tripled what I was bringing people on at. And I was getting a ton of leads over the last few weeks, last couple of months. I've been getting a ton of leads and we were talking about in in, in the background we were talking about how the majority of those leads were just not qualified, but two of them that I was really, I, I felt really good about when it came time to tell them, okay, this is what I charge. I quoted them. You told me, Hey, you need to at least double your prices. I actually tripled my prices and I changed my offer a little bit. When I quoted both of them, what my price was, that was what made them decide to go with me. Both of them said the same thing. The fact that you confidently said that you're worth this much is what made me confident that you are the guy that we should be paying to do this. So I want to get your thoughts on that because I hadn't shared that with you yet. I'm really happy to hear that. And guess what? You're more, you're worth more than that. If you can answer this following question at that price, can I fucking crush it for them? Mm Mm-hmm. If you can answer that question, you're worth every penny they're paying you and probably more. Now, to speak to that further, you believed it. You believed it enough to fucking speak it. Whether you internally were like, I totally got this, or you internally were going, oh my God, this is fucking terrifying. The way it came out of your mouth was confident enough that they went, he he believes that. He said it. He believes it. He owns that. Yes, you're our guy. That's exactly how it works. You practiced it. Amazing. <laughs> okay. So enough uh, tooting each other's horns <laughs> on this episode. Is there anything that you want to leave people with? I feel like we've covered a lot. Um, it's important to define what it is that you want. It's important to understand what it is that you will not tolerate. And it's really important not to budge on that. I think that budging was one of the things that kept screwing me up. Um, is there anything else that you want to really drive home before we're out of here? Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Nice. You think okay. you're, if you think you deserve it and you speak it, you deserve it. All right. Landon, if people think they can handle some more episodes of the podcast, where can they go to make that happen? 
We do this regularly at salesgorillapodcast.com or you can come find me in my Facebook group, Getting Clients Without Being Salesy. Bitches. <laughs> All right, man. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't stand and I know that's mutual. Peace out.